I had best talk to Jab. I've listened closely to what you have to say, Poirot. For me, there's no doubt, Cust is guilty. Do you have any element that might prove the contrary? That is what we're going to look for. Let us now try and get our brain cells to work. The evidence against Cust is overwhelming. His presence at the scenes, the knife, the bloodstained shirt, the ABCs in a box. C'est vrai. However, the blood Mrs. Marbury saw on Cust's shirt may have been his own. According to his medical records, he suffers from hemoptysis. The murderer cuts a Carmichael throat from behind and the blood spurted outwards. You would expect the murderer's shirt to be stained on the sleeves, not on the buttonholes. Yet we see quite the opposite. You would expect the murderer to keep the newspaper articles about his crimes. But Cust's collection starts in Cheston, as if it discovered the case rather late. Hmm, I agree it's troubling, but it doesn't change my mind. There's small details that we should be able to clear up by questioning Cust. When can you talk to him? Doncaster is sending him to us on the first train. Are they questioning him already? He says he can't remember a thing. It's plausible. Dr. Say suffers from absences and amnesia. Mrs. Marbury has confirmed this. He may have done the murders in an altered state. A familiar situation. It's not enough to clear his name. Dr. Thompson insisted that even if you don't know what you're doing, you never commit a murder without wanting to. Très intéressant. I shall remember that. Right. I'll go and examine the suspect's room. Chief Inspector, I took the liberty of removing a few clues to examine at home. All right, we'll discuss them tomorrow. In the meantime, I'm going to see if you've missed something. To Scotland Yard, please. This man is not in good shape. He is worried and very tired, and other police have been hard on him. What do you want from me? Good day, ABC. Do you know who I am? Someone who's got it in for me. I am Hercule Poirot, and I want nothing other than the truth. Ah, you're the detective. 
Why did you send me a letter before each crime? Why all these questions? When <coughs> are you going to stop pestering me? <coughs> Poor man. If only I could help him. Take this. It will help you. Thank you. <coughs> oh, good God, my shirt is covered in blood again. Bon. I now know where the bloodstains Mrs. Marbury so came from. Are you well enough to speak? Yes, I feel much better. Why did you send me a letter before each crime? Why all these questions? When <coughs> are you going to stop pestering me? Maybe you forgot that you wrote these letters. Yes, it's true. Sometimes I forget. Maybe I did type them. Are you capable of murder, Mr. Cust? All these questions are giving me a headache. <sighs> you suffered during the war. It's true. I was wounded. I suffered, but the army was the only place I didn't feel inferior. No questions, just orders to follow. But ever since you were wounded, you have absences, bouts of amnesia. And headaches. <sighs> Professor Clark treated you. Yes, a few years ago he really helped me with my burned throat. And to thank him, you murdered him? Stop talking about these murders. <laughs> Do you deny being at the scene of the crimes? So? There was no harm in being there. It was only for my work. You were seen at all the crime scenes. Yes, I was. I travel a lot. But not for pleasure. I am terribly unwell in trains. But I had to respect my engagements. My employer gave me very precise written instructions about the towns I had to visit. <coughs> Let's see. The company you claim to work for, Silky Legs, has never heard of you. And as for these letters they sent you, they were written on your own typewriter. The company sent me the typewriter when I started working for them. Yes, but the letters were received afterwards. So it would appear that you typed them before sending them to yourself. I... I don't remember. Good God! I don't know what's happening to me. My head hurts terribly. Take this. It will help you. <coughs> oh, I think I'll be fine. Let us see, Cust. Look at me. You know very well that you committed these murders? Yes, I know. But I'm not wrong in saying that you do not know why you committed them. No, I don't.
And what conclusions have you drawn? Plenty. It might help us to understand him a little better. Let us now try and get our brand cells to work. I don't see any clearer than before. This is worse. There is one point, Twilight. C'est curieux. Cust admits that he killed, but he does not know why. What did Dr. Thompson say? Even if Cust killed while in an altered state, it still must have been his deepest desire. He must have had a motive. Let's keep it simple. Never mind his motive. He confessed. But you see, he can confess to anything and everything. He denied the murders and then he confessed to them. He confirmed that he never typed the letters, then with great ease, I managed to get him to say quite the opposite. Come on, he behaved like a guilty man. He lied to his landlady. Because deep down he believes himself guilty. From the papers he noticed that he had always been at the scene of the crimes. He must think that he killed and then simply forgot what he had done. How can you be so sure? Let us look at his psychological profile. You will understand my point of view. Let us now try and get our brain cells to work. Thank you. 
Lucas' character is quite the opposite of the murderers. But if he's a madman, can we really talk about his character? You know very well that how a murderer does not behave like a psychopath. Apart from the signature, there is no ritual repetition in the choice of victims. Very well, very well. You're right, as always. So, we have no confession, no culprit, no suspects, nothing. And all that after two months of inquiry? What shall I do? Have faith. Just give me 24 hours. To White Haven, please. Cust's arrest is a great success for you, Poirot. It's all clear now, except maybe one or two details. Details? Ah, mon ami. The devil is in the detail, as we say. Excuse me? Patience, Hastings. Everything will be clear once our guests arrive. Best be prepared. Slip a revolver into your pocket before they do. A revolver? But Poirot, what are you afraid of? Trust me. It is important you carry a weapon for this meeting. I will lend you mine. What about telling me what you have in mind? Surtout pas. You wouldn't be able to play your role. Wait one moment, I will bring you my weapon. <laughs> 